girl over in London. Wow. July 19th, 34 years exactly today. Wow. The dates lined up, the whole thing lined up, which is pretty trippy. And I hear it every 18 years is how that works. Did you guys know that? No. no. So much that we can, if we get out of bed, we can learn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the trick is getting out of bed. Getting out of bed. So what's, uh, what's changed in the overall movie world from 84 doing a Supergirl movie to your ability to do one now? Uh, well, you can just stand in front of a green screen these days, I guess. Yeah. You know, well, you don't need to have the, the practicals. I remember when we first did the first Superman movie, it was all... The London crew, we did Supergirl in London, and we did the Superman film all in London at Pinewood Studios in Shepparton. These guys were just kind of making it up at the time. I mean, it was one of those where it was, you know, how are we going to get away with this? And I remember the first day I left California and went to London, put me in a car from the airport, I went to Shepparton Studios, and I walked into this huge soundstage, and... They were just doing the shot with the promo of Superman where he kind of flies through the Fortress of Solitude, right. mm -hmm. flies by, and I walked in, that's the first thing I see, everybody starts clapping. That was the moment they realized, we're going to be able to do this. Yeah. And just in my life, man, I tell you what, I'm grateful. I'm a grateful person. And I've been in some moments where it's just like, without knowing it at the time, you know, you're somewhere right now yeah. that counts. Yeah. And that was one of them. That's one thing that I can, because I don't remember too much, but I remember that moment, and it, I remember it because it, it actually meant something. You know, it really, it was the start of something that, you know, brought us to where we are today, really. And you have a, you had a flying moment with Chris, so. Yeah. Oh, was yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, was, what was that? But one of the greatest moments uh, in that particular thing, uh, I remember with Christopher Reeve, and we were up on... Uh, up on the wires above the sound stage and uh, I think it was you know, it was the Hoover Dam sequence mm -hmm. and he kind of asked me at that time if I could just try to be like Jimmy you know try to act like Jimmy because I'm up there and we're rambling and I'm rambling you know I'm just a kid from California you know and, and I'm just having a good time and Chris has got a big responsibility and while we were up there he said if you can just help me out by being Jimmy and from that moment on I gave him Jimmy and it was such a gift for him to do that for me. I'll tell you what. And you're the only <coughs> one from the Supergirl film that was in one of yeah. the previous Superman films. So what was that like for you, basically being the carryover? I, you know, I didn't even think about that, but I, I kind of, uh, I think I realized I was the carryover. And so I've been hearing that Chris was maybe going to do it. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, they said he was in some far-off galaxy. Yep. Yeah, he's right. on a peacekeeping mission. Well, and somebody had to do it. And I think what he ended up doing is staying at the Hilton and, you know, just took it as a vacation <laughs> and didn't rush back. But uh, as I remember seeing Chris for the first time in that outfit, if, if you guys got to, you know, go up on the wires or just see Christopher Reeve in that outfit, mm. he was Superman. And I'm... I don't know if in my lifetime if anybody's going to take that spot. Yeah. I've been hoping for it. I love Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And Wonder Woman did it for me as far as a film that was comparable. Uh, but Christopher Reeve looked like Superman. He was the guy. And he came out of nowhere. I never saw his face before. And he was Superman. Same thing happened with Helen. When I went in there, I was like, well, who's this going to be? You know, in... in for Christopher Reeve, they were trying to get Sylvester Stallone, they were thinking, they were thinking Robert Redford. I mean, they were just thinking, we got to get a name to put the outfit on. And that's really such the opposite of what you should do. And I remember seeing Helen, and she was it. She was super good. She looked good. She was fresh, strong. And I felt uh, I felt very comfortable with her. And she was a, she was a good actress. And what I tried to bring with any of my acting... <coughs> Not necessarily just with Superman, but I want to be believable. I want to be a believable character. And I think when you do anything in the comic book world, you have to be believable. You know, don't, you don't have to tell jokes. Just be believable. Let the material get you through. And let the material be funny. But you just have to be believable. And I think that's, that's a trick with anything. And... Uh, I've been lucky. I retired maybe five, six years ago because I thought I can't keep getting away with. Because I, one of the very things that you guys that I'll just tell you, 
is I never wanted to get caught out. And I kind of thought, I'm pushing my luck. I went to military school my whole life. When I got out, I had an opportunity because we knew a lady that was an agent. She said, you want to try it? I said, yeah, I'll try it. And just things kept going. And as my career kept going, I kept thinking, I don't want to get caught. Yeah. Not knowing what I'm, I, I don't know even know how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I am here. What do you think when in, in Batman v Superman, Jimmy Olsen got killed just at, right at the first five minutes? I didn't even know he was Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. They, yeah. I, no one they, I, I don't think they even knew it was Jimmy Olsen, but why they're messing with Jimmy Olsen, I don't know. He's such a great character. He's such a part of him. Yeah. Lois Lane, I mean, don't, what are you messing around with? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. You got guys that people love. Jimmy Olsen is such an original character. He's so wholesome. He's so American. He's so he's just who he is. He's a he's a real person. Why why are you gonna get rid of him? Put him in there. I don't care where you put him, put him in there though. Let the audience have him. He's just I mean, how old is he now? 75 years? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the senior Jimmy Olsen now. He lost Jack Larson, who was a great Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. And what a great guy. And he looked he looked like Jimmy Olsen all the way to the end. I mean, I'm not quite sure if I still look like my Jimmy. But you need a bow tie? Yeah. If I'm going to put a bow tie on, I'd knock it out. Or you'd say, there's Mark. Or there's Jimmy. There's Jimmy. But uh, Jack Larson was such a great guy. Boy, did he have Hollywood stories. He was, he was a cool cat. Tell us about how you got the part. I was working on a houseboat. I was living on a houseboat in Marina Del Rey. Yeah. And I got the call. And I went up and I met Dick Donner, um, Tom Mankiewicz, and Lynn Stallmaster, who was the casting director. And I walk into the interview and uh, they say, well, what are you doing? And Dick Donner said, you know, what are you, what are you up to? And I said, well, I'm living on a houseboat. Life is pretty cool. You know, and, and uh, you know, I didn't know the business at all. When I went into interviews, I could, if I got the job, cool. If I didn't get the job, cool. There was nothing riding on it for me. And he always wanted to live on a, Dick Donner would always wanted to live on a houseboat. Or always wanted to live on a boat. So all we talked about was boats. And at the end of it, 20 minutes, I get up and I start walking out. And he said, by the way, do you know who Jimmy Olsen is? And I said, golly, Mr. Kent. Because I, I, I did know who Jimmy Olsen was. They all laughed and I left. It was like about three months later. And I had forgotten about it. Three months later, I got a call back saying they want to see you again. And I remember coming into the uh, the office, and there was a guy sitting there that everybody would know. And you know, I'm, I'm always just talking to everybody. And I said, "You up for? Are you up for Jimmy Olsen?" He goes, "No, I'm up for uh, Winnie the Pooh." <laughs> <laughs> so for ten minutes, we just both sat there quiet because I was like, you know, really with the attitude, what, what's up? So anyway, we, we were just quiet. But anyway, I walked into the office. Dick Donner said, "I just want to remember what you look like." And I got the part. Wow. And a week later, I'm on off to London, wow. doing awesome. the part. Yeah, I did, if, if I read, I probably would have blown it. Who knows? But was I didn't it, have to read. I just had to be there. I had to be at the it, right place uh, at the right time. Sorry. Was it uh, Marlon Brando? Was that the guy that you were, that you were talking to then? Uh, I was not talking to Marlon. Oh, okay. No, no <laughs> Marlon Brando. But I did see Marlon Brando, and he gave, uh, I think it was, what was it, uh, like 3,000 pounds to each crew member that worked on Superman. You know, he made a lot of, I forget, I think he made five million for the first one, maybe the second one. But he took he took care of the crew and he was a cool cat. I mean, like I said, I got to, I got to be with people in my lifetime and I never took pictures. I didn't think much of it at the time, but when I look back, it's like, how did I get here? No doubt. I'm sure everybody. Yeah. Like, how'd you guys get here? I know these helped you with those passes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Those helped you, but without those passes, yeah. you're outside. Yeah. 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 All yeah. Those yeah. This is a weekend with that pass. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is really. I was here a long time ago with Superman, and it was it was a lot smaller. Yeah. <laughs> this has gotten a little cuckoo. It's a little anxiety, man. There's a lot of people. When you were shooting uh, with Dick Donner, do you feel the tension between him and the Salkins that eventually will be replaced? I sat next to Elias Salkin a little bit ago at a uh, screening at the Brahmins Chinese Theater, and he started talking about how he fired Dick Donner and why he fi fired Dick Donner. <laughs> and boy, did I want to say something. Dick Donner is the only reason why I'm sitting here. He was it. And for whatever, they said if Superman was a failure, 
they would have kept him on. But it was a success. Mm -hmm. So they replaced him with Richard Lester. And Dick Donner is one of those guys where you can, he brings you on the set, you find moments. You just improv and you find human moments. And then you shoot it. Richard Lester took over and we came back and Margo, Margo Kidder, who we just lost. She was the really the only person that spoke up against the whole thing. Because I really didn't know. Christopher Reeve didn't speak up and he could have. But Margo Kidder was the only one that really spoke up for Dick. But we came on the set after we came back from the premiere in, in uh, Washington, and we found that Donna wasn't going to be there, Richard Lester was the new director. And Lester had already been there, kind of mm -hmm. hanging around, because the Salkines did something with him and owed him money. But we come on the set, and there'd be an X there, and Lester would go, OK, you're going to stand on this X. There's three cameras. You're going to stand there, say that, stand there, say that. And it just became like, you don't even need us. We don't even, you know, you just need somebody. And it all, from that moment on, it got a little different. And I love the sequel that Michael Thaw found uh, with the Donner Cut. Yeah. Yeah. That's the true awesome. sequel. It's I the true it, sequel. Yeah. It's just a beautiful Jeffrey Unsworth. It's just a, oh, yeah. it's just beautiful. And it's just, and Dick Donner was signed for seven films. I was signed for seven. Everybody signed for seven films yeah. at, the, at the beginning. And we'll, we'll just never know. You know, it's just like in life. We'll never know what could have been. And God bless Christopher Reeve. You know, uh, in a lifetime to be Superman and to be the Superman and then end up in a wheelchair and, and go out in a big, big way. God bless Do you feel that they, they could have, uh, kind of, there was a lot of gold to mine with Jimmy and Superman and Lois' relationship oh, yeah. that really wasn't... Oh, it would have been there. It would have been there if, if the universe wanted it that way. You know, because it was all set to go. And we had all the... The writing group, everybody in that room in 1977, it was all meant to be. Everybody was at the right place at the right time. It was a magical time to be with filmmakers. Yeah. You know that? And Dick Donner, yeah. it doesn't get better. Whatever happened to that guy? Uh, <laughs> Dick Donner is uh, a. Right. If you can ever He's say anything, Christopher, yeah.